I, I found MIC in 2020, uh, June. Best decision of my life so far. And I've been uh, an MIC member for a year. Cool. So the best cool. decision of my life. Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> my name is Jay. Uh, I trade large caps. Oh, so you yeah. travel far too? So. Yeah, uh, six hour drive. Oh, left, nice. Left, left house at 2 a.m. Yeah, but thank you so much nice. for this meetup. You guys are dope. All right, so. Uh, I've been a member for Seattle, nice. two oh, months. Oh, that's awesome. Seattle area, yeah. Um, yeah, so your driving video is what made me decide to join. Yes, I'm with the Next Gens over here. Tell us yeah. about your group. Yeah, absolutely. So all these young guys right here, uh, we're the Next Gen Traders. Uh, we're all under 20, uh, but I've been with MIC for about eight months now. Joined in May and uh, never looked back. So Dude, I'm that's, Florida. that's the power of the club, man. You and yeah. all these boys making friends in real life, getting in there and being yeah. together, shooting the shit, learning that there's yeah. other traders out there. It's huge, man. This, yeah. is, this is why we did this. Yeah. This I mean, is why. Half these guys just met them in MIC. Brother, We've got I a family met now. half my moderators in person. Yeah. But when we do, we're best friends, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's how it goes, man. Yeah. That's how it goes. These guys are like, barbecuing yeah. this morning they were like hiking they went oh, to the yeah. hollywood sign obviously everybody here knows how amazing mic is but you know united messed up my flight about here they uh wow. paid for my hotel for thursday night for no reason yeah. just offered it so that's like it has nothing to do with me but it's just that is what mic is about and it means so much just caring about the members and putting people first uh, we need an over 40 club <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's the old kids man? we're all old man. Uh, i like to short on top and call out a breakout Nice. <laughs> so we all, Where are you man? from? Uh, I'm, from, I'm from Vietnam. Yeah, nice. yeah Vietnam originally. Yeah. I swim over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm the whole backpack. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We all been through uh, dark time, and uh, I can relay a lot to that. Uh, and thank you. Thank you guys. Cool, man. Uh, cool. You're on your way, buddy. So that's exactly what it is. So look around, guys, and don't be discouraged because you know it, man. The thing that I want you guys to take away today, this is the most important thing that I learned in my life in anything. Guys, it's you versus you. Fuck Twitter, dude. Anybody can make money. They can post huge. You guys have to understand, man, you're not versus Alex. Alex is not versus me. Look, when Samuel looks in the mirror, Samuel needs to say, how can I be better than I was yesterday? In anything you do, but yeah. specifically trading. And if you read Twitter all day, you're gonna compare yourself and you're gonna destroy that mental state. You need to make this mental Kryptonian armor. Yeah. It's in here. If you think you can't do it, you can't. If you think you can do it, you can't. But that's what he was saying. It's all fucking mental, dude. I don't care what you look like. He could be the best trader in five years right now. Yeah. Would you assume uh, that? Maybe right. not. Maybe that's why <laughs> you have this perceived notion of maybe it looks like Alex. Got a big old beard, he's good at trading. There's no prerequisites, except just be better and be humble. We're just people, man. We're just doing the best we can with what we're given, right? Well, let's just click buttons. But you gotta have a work ethic. Cut the loss. Yeah. Cut, the cut the loss, man! <laughs> cut the loss, man! Obviously, we can go through the technicals and stuff, but at the end of the day, man, you gotta believe in yourself, you gotta put in a work ethic, and you gotta stop reading all the bullshit and the noise. They're blinders, right? It's you versus you, that's it. And one last thing that I wanna say is treat it like a businessman. Yeah. If you want to make more money than a doctor, work, dude. You gotta work for Watch it. Watch the bro. videos. You gotta work for it. It's just not easy, bro. It's not meant to be easy. If it was easy, I'd have an island and he'd have a fucking. I plane. thought you do have an island. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, guys. Treat it like a business. When I first started, I treated it like a business. If you treat it like the casino, it will be the casino, right? If you're just fucking throwing trades or just trying to do it randomly or putting it on red or putting it on black, there's not repeatable. You can't make money doing that. Yeah. So treat it like a business, <laughs> take it seriously. But the good thing is everyone here has already been through the downs. So talk about it, see what you guys could do to improve on it and enjoy yourselves. And if you haven't been through the downs yet, we have, man. Yeah, We've yeah. been through the deepest, darkest pits of despair, depression, anxiety, p &Ls. Learn from our structure. That's the point the watch list, the curriculum. If you need help getting started, I'm your guy to help you get started because I, I bro, you know, <laughs> this is pretty bad, bro. <laughs> That's awesome. What's going on eBay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. I feel like I'm meeting rock stars. <laughs> I'm extremely shy, so for me to come up here right now, I just need to this is good, do it man. now. Good. Yeah. 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 Why not? I, uh, I, I actually used to help run the National right. Space Defense Center. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I actually uh, left the government after 22 years because I fell in love with trading. And I, I really can't thank all of you enough because the comments that you have on the website and after joining MIC, I found my passion after doing defense for so long. 
I never thought that I'd be going in this direction. You guys have really made a big impact on my life and my kids' life. I even brought my daughter here. She, she knows what uh, her, her favorite's low-hanging fruit. Oh, yeah. That's a good way to start. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just really feel like this is a family. And for me to come all the way out here like this, I hope that speaks volume because uh, everyone here means a lot to me and my family. And thanks to Bao and Alex, it's just uh, been a journey. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Oren, uh, large cap swing mod. So happy to see you all. Glad we made this meetup happen. So what Bao said that if you're, you're, you have something going on in your life that needs fixing, do that and then come back to trading. Trading is all about touching buttons. So I, I tell people that I touch buttons to make money and they don't believe me. And I trick the, the people in the pharmaceutical <clears throat> company, the plant manager, the same as the guy that pick up the trash. I respect everyone. I'm like the traveling moderator, right? Like I travel all around Europe, uh, Middle East. I haven't been home. This is my first time in California, you know, a little over two years. Um, I love traveling because I can meet different people, learn about different cultures, share, you know, experiences with, with people. I love history. I love to learn about their countries and you know, things to do there. and. Uh, MIC has gave me access to be able to do that. About three years ago, I quit my full-time job and I just started trading two and a half years ago or so. And uh, I just started traveling. I just had a couple years saved up and I just left. And, uh, you know, without MIC, I mean, I probably could have made a good run for a year or so, but I would have had to come back and get back to work. So now, uh, bank account's good. I'm at least out here another couple years traveling. I mean, so I go to a country, I don't know anything about the country. And then next thing you know, I've got a local member like showing me, you know, everything about his country and we're hanging out, having drinks, having dinner. So like for me, it's really about being able to be social, get to know people, learn about their cultures, share with them and really connecting different countries and connecting the world. And we do that through trading. Trading to me is just like a tool to be able to follow my passion. And MIC is the way to get there. And without Val, Alex and Fox, I mean, I'd probably be still working on nine to five. So I would say be patient, uh, stick with MIC. If you're not there yet, give it time. Don't worry about the profits, just worry about trading well and you'll get there eventually. I might have similar exits and entries to my mentor and who I look up to and who I want to be as a trader, but like I have a completely different process than them. So I think just not comparing yourself is huge. And then another thing, I don't know if it's kind of like spiritual, but like people always think about where they want to be in the future in this like ideal future state. And then they look at themselves and they're, they're inferior to where they want to be. And they're always like, well, I don't have that money I want to be, or I'm not the trader that I want to be. And when you keep telling yourself you're not who you want to be, you won't be that person. So it, yeah, exactly. So it's like start to tell yourself today that you already are that ideal future trader you want to be. Like you might not have the millions of dollars in your bank account, but like that future Tyler that's trading, like he's going to be pretty disciplined. He's going to be patient. He's going to stick to his process. It's so like you can be that future desired self today and tell yourself today that you are the trader you want to be. And then you'll recognize that you'll start to feel better when you're trading. And when you feel better, you'll start to stick to your rules. You'll stick to your process. You won't deviate because you're not emotional. And all of that stress comes from thinking that we're not where we want to be. And that removes so much stress. And I think with trading, like we'll trade our best when we're not emotional, when we're not stressed. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. Just compare yourself to where you are today. Feel good today. And just know that like whatever you're doing today will get you to where you want to be. But you just have to look at it today. So I just wanted to thank um, Alex, Tosh, and Bao for having everyone here and helping me and um, giving us a place where we can you know, find a mentor and find someone that we can ask questions to. And I'm excited to hopefully do the same for, for all of you and everyone else. Yeah, that's a good point. Cause you know what? You would have killed for a $500 thing <laughs> versus working at Starbucks. And so that's the thing that messes up those traders because they forget that they used to want this, that 500 bucks or whatever you was what made you happy. Why are you not happy now? So sometimes you have to be like, okay, man, my ego is preventing me from being happy. You know, my goal is just to fucking supplement my income, for example, whatever it may be, right? And so imagine if you, you made an extra 200 bucks a day, you would have been ecstatic and happy. But you're not happy anymore is because when, when you got it, you never, you didn't really appreciate it because you look around, you're like, dude, this other dumbass makes more money than me. Or whatever it may be, because I'm like, you're like more entitled now, right? So, so that's why I always keep, that's why Alex keeps a stack of dollar bills to remind him how much 100 bucks is. And that's why I 
You know, like for me as well, like I go to Costco, maybe that store, I, I go there and I'm like, holy fuck, dude. When I was a kid, I couldn't buy any of this shit. But now I could buy anything I fucking want. But it didn't make me happy now. You understand? So it's like, so you have to ground yourself. And, and the moment that you're happy making a hundred fucking dollars, dude, you don't have to pick up trash or do construction work like Josh did, right? Dude, I was doing construction work eight years ago, bro. I was like, I, I mean, I'm pretty loud, but the, 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 I'm like really loud. <laughs> the thing is, guys, let me say it like this on more of a technical standpoint versus what we've been talking about, motivation and getting to know who you are. Even if you came into MIC and you realize, oh my God, maybe trading's not for me. Learn how the stock market works. Stock market, real estate, and business ownership are the only real ways to accrue generational wealth and to get rich. If you put your money in a bank, it's gonna lose value over time, right? You know inflation, we talk about it, Fed raises, whatever. Alex did a really good YouTube live on this recently. If you don't know how the Fed works, if you don't know how SPY works, you're gonna learn that MIC, this is not just day trading, even though that's what most of us do, and most of us are after. I long-term invest. SPY's down 20% right now, I threw in. That's a great opportunity in my eyes. That's not investment advice to do that, but you're gonna learn how the market works. This is a wealth generator. So you're gonna get value in every way. And the beautiful thing about this is, and the reason why I brought this up, is if you're stumbling in your trading, right? Right now, if you are, and maybe you've given it a really long time and a college boy try, there's dividend investing, there's long-term investing, Joe does options. Dude, I didn't know what an option was eight years into my career. I was like, Joe, this is amazing. I know options now because of Joe Kelly. I was a trader for eight years, me and Alex, like now we know options. Alex killed on Tesla that one day in options trading. Last minute options, right Alex, didn't you do some puts? The point is guys, I know there's a couple in this crowd. It's just mathematically feasible, right? There's a couple in this crowd that are on the brink of maybe I wanna give up trading, it's very hard. It's hard for some people, especially the most emotional. The fact that me and Val were able to become traders is insane. We're emotional fucking people. Dude, he's the most emotional, but I'm right behind him. Alex is a steady hand. He's a stone of emotion. That's his superpower. That's not mine. That's not mine, I'm erratic. So I love everything and you have to find what works for you. So if you're on the brink of like, you know what, man, trading's really hard, maybe it's not for me, give it another try in another form of the stock market. You'll find something that works for you. Because if you just go work a job and put your money in the bank, you're gonna get smoked. You're gonna get smoked. Even knowing just that you can put your money in an index or a mutual fund or a SPY is so much value. It's worth an annual membership over a lifetime. It's worth a lifetime membership. I'm not trying to sell you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's not what I'm here to do. <laughs> what I'm saying is guys, is I swear to God, like don't go in with this predefined notion of I'm not Alex, I'm a loser, man. You don't have to make that kind of money. We created MIC so the normal guy can maybe have a fighting chance to stop the job he hates going to. He found out how to make $150 a day. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? This is common sense. This is what people don't think about. And every idiot on Twitter is trying to program you that if you don't make Alex money, you're a loser. I don't make Alex money. He's insane. He's an astronomical anomaly in trading. But if you get to any level of $150, 200, 2000 a day, pretty easy when you've been doing it for a long time. That's huge, dude. And it's something you love. I love what Samuel was talking about earlier. I love what a lot of you, you guys were talking about earlier. Oh, Ren's kicking ass now. You'll get there. But Jeez. don't judge yourself so strongly that because some guy on Twitter, because Alex is who Alex is, anomaly of an anomaly, that you're falling short, you versus you, and there's something that you're gonna identify with. And it might not be short selling, might not be longing first bounces. Maybe you're a spy investor. You are now part of the stock market now is because maybe MIC, great. We're not really credit takers. We're all super humble dudes, whatever. But this is a family, but you guys are now introduced to the biggest wealth generator in our society next to real estate and business ownership. There's a lot of people who don't want to do business. They didn't go to accounting. And there's a lot of people who, look, real estate, man, it's a lot. It's a language in itself. I almost bought a house like two months ago. And I was like, I don't even want to deal with it, man. I throw all my money in SPY, all my extra money. Just throw it in a spy, make some money trading, throw it in a spy. That's what I like. This is a perspective from the trader side. So what I want to do is I want to have Cobra guys come and talk about the perspective Hell from the yeah. broker side. Right here. Because they see they see the back end of what we all do. Uh, so first off, thank all of you guys for coming out. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so great to meet a lot of you guys in person that we talked with on chat or on the phone. Uh, makes a great group. We do get to work with a lot of amazing traders, Val and Alex included. 
we're invested in you guys' success. These guys are invested in you guys' success. Our incentive is always to see you guys succeed at trading. Um, so even if you don't have a Cobra account, hopefully one day you're considering it. And I know these mid guys have your best interest in mind. I can say that for sure. So, so what do you guys see on the broker end that a lot of traders are doing wrong that maybe you could kind of help them out on? Going full size in the pre-market. The dumbest thing you can do, right? Yeah, <laughs> people love doing it. Just these guys see everything, right? They, they're the guys behind the screens that watch everyone's accounts, right? So they know exactly what people are doing wrong. So that's why I wanted you guys to kind of come on here and explain what you guys see people doing wrong so that we all can learn from that and improve from it. And uh, listen to these guys, Max Loss. Max Loss. Best thing. Yeah, yeah the, the account Max thing. Loss is badass, really helpful. Sizing is everything. If you can learn how to consistently make $100, like you used an example, you can scale that up, make $500, make 1,000, make 10,000. If you have a strategy that works, again, you can scale it. Uh, it takes discipline, it takes time. And one of the worst things that we see is when guys come in and blow up quick. We hate to see that. I mean, uh, the micro cap space that these guys trade in is extremely volatile. We, of course, have to mitigate a lot of risks on the back end for the firm itself. There's a lot to learn from them. And use the tools that you have at your availability. Like, again, if you have a Cobra account, Use that account max loss. Position max loss too. You know, you learn your own disciplines, but that can really help in the meantime, really help you uh, build strategies at work. And yeah, we so get to see like high highs and low lows. Max size, max loss, no oversizing pre-market. Wait a second, those who teaches ones? those things? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? So the same things that we talk about is the same things that they see on their end with traders trading 30,000 or 30 million. You know what I'm and saying? And they got accounts at Cobra deal with both of those. So, yeah. so if those guys are trading 30 million are doing the same things that a $30,000 account is doing, that's your lesson to know what works and what doesn't work. It's just habits, guys. It's just what works and what doesn't. They know. Yeah. I mean, they're the magician. They're the, like the magician. We're just the guy watching them. They know everything, you know, behind the back end. That's what they're telling you. Yeah, so if you guys see them asking questions, maybe if you guys are at different brokers, talk to them. I think they have special deals going on, but yeah, they're here to help you guys. Yeah, guys, Cobra's awesome. Guys, pizza, uh, shirts. Thanks. If you guys want a mask, come up here. We'll throw you a mask. <laughs> I mean, right. Can I get the signature? Like, like, sure, man. You want? I'm just like, you want mine? Yes. Of course. Extra large. Mira a ver si cabe aquí. Mira a ver si cabe ahí. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Used to be his vice president. What's all about, right? It's just, it's just people, man. I'm not showing you anymore. Thank you. That was good, man. And so, don't be afraid to come up and, you know, like he came because we're normal people, right? And then, look at him. He's hiding. You know, to be honest, right? So. Imagine if we didn't do this. He, he, may have, he, may, he may have never even thought about joining. He'd be too scared. All you guys are just, maybe there's how many people here? 200? Eight of them are not MIC members. So those that are not MIC members, why don't you all gather here? She's not a member. She's like, hey, what are your rates? What can you do for me? Well, yeah, the, guy, the guy that delivered the pizza wanted to join as well. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll get him too. But the point is, don't be shy. Uh, for the first six months, I was consistently profitable because you enter a trade with a plan, you have a level that you kind of set as like your confidence level. Okay, if it hits here, you know, I'm going to be out or, you know, you give a little tolerance or threshold. It's all about being aware of what could happen, having a plan, plan A, plan B, and really sticking to it. And uh, I, I got to say, you know, you guys are amazing at what you do. You guys are humble. You guys are and reinforce good habits. So I'm just out here. I really just want to thank you guys uh, and all the mentors, and, uh, moderators. So the best thing, in my opinion, has always been to get other people who, who is at your level or starting whatever, explain to you what they did to get to that next step. Maybe you don't even know how to place an order, and no even everyone assumes that you know how to place an order. And so we bypass that because we think we take it for granted. For example, right? And so when these guys are asking me, how do you? How do you place an order on um, the offer? Because they, they don't, these guys don't even know you can't do that. So I mean, like sometimes we take it for granted like that. But other rooms that are pumping up rooms, they they want you to slam the bed. They're using macros and whatever the hell it may be, right? And so come up here, tell your story of your struggles and, what, and how you overcame that. And I guarantee you, by doing that, you're gonna realize that holy shit, you know a lot more than you think. Your win could be, you know, multiple. 
though your win rate is 30%, you're, you're gonna, you know, your gains are gonna be uh, really, really. I was like, before I started trading, you know, I don't even know where to start, but they give you a path. You want to be long, you want to be short, and, and you see the different traders in the different stages of their lives. Maybe they've, they've, they've gone through things that you've already went through. They're going through things that you have gone through, but usually it's the other way around, and you see all the different traders in, in their path. See the path, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, MIC gives you that roadmap to success, really. You know, I, I, I was long. Joined my seat, then I was short. Once I learned how to short, I was even better long, so now I'm long. And it's all because of MIC. Uh, about replacing income, just to give you a background. I've been a data analyst, a financial analyst, data quality for Fortune 500 companies for the last maybe 18, 20 years. I wasn't really happy working for a company, so I wanted to branch out on my own and make money. And it was really difficult. I was into data. It was very hard to read the charts. So uh, I was watching Bao's videos, Alex's videos, a lot of free good content. I learned a lot from that. And now I joined MIC about two months ago. I learned from everyone I can, but uh, MIC definitely solid. And I learned it after being in trading for several years. So I could distinguish the real deal versus not so much real. And definitely MIC is the real deal. I love Alex's watch list. <laughs> I wanted to say that. What I realized for me what works is that until I become a good trader, I don't consider myself a good trader, although I don't lose much. Uh, I decided to have a side income, uh, which was hard for me to do. So I lowered my bills. I paid off all my credit cards, everything paid off my cars everything and that's my way of staying afloat i don't need to make much money to be successful and if i prove that over time that i can be consistent so i just wanted to share my experience i was just put on the spot I as a <laughs> parent, <laughs> anything like that. if you're pressured by financial things and so if you want to really make it to your career lower your bills until you make enough money because if you keep up with this lifestyle Unnecessary fancy cars, going out to dinner, what, going to bars, whatever. You will not succeed. The reason he's succeeding because he, he has no financial pressure. And then one last thing, guys. Uh, I was making like around 100000 or so right at my job. But I ended up with maybe like 60% of that. Uh, I realized I'm, gonna make, I'm making much less. And I have my expenses high. I end up making same kind of money. Yeah, oh yeah, quality life, there's not right? two ways about it, man, exactly. like quality life. I started MIC like two months ago. I discovered the whole deal through Alex on his YouTube videos. They were very helpful, thank you so much. I have joined like over five chat rooms and when I joined these guys, um, it just clicked the first time when I heard the low hanging fruits, go get a job. You have to cancel the emotional factor before you can be a sustainable trader because oftentimes I will see the setup there, but I can't press the button. I don't, I don't want to lose money. We want to cancel the, uh, the emotional factor first. I would consider the education to be like 30% max. With a practice, you would get better, but 70% at least will be emotional. Yeah, because if I trade with, a, with one share, I mean, I can keep adding till 100 bucks with no panic. But I have done that on a stock called uh, ACY, if you guys remember. It skipped on me all the way to 28. I ended up cutting on the top. It, it skipped to 38 and then they, they like it was T12 or something and then resumed at 16 bucks. That was a big lesson. So not add to losers. Don't fight the trend. Focus on the low hanging fruit. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. There's that dip of toe and then the crocodile gets your whole body, man. Anybody else? I've done that. And so it's relatable. And so I'm telling you, man, the more you hear that, the more you, you, you become a better trader because you're like, I thought I was the only idiot that did that. Are you still eating? <laughs> <laughs> if someone ate with me, I would be like, you know, <laughs> you're so damn skinny. <laughs> Dude, I can't gain right. Um, do you guys have any questions? Does anybody have questions for us directly as a group? Is this the questionnaire part? Like, ask whatever you want. Yeah. You, you have people that make this for a living. Ask questions. You, I know you have questions. The one thing I'll add before you ask a question, Joe, is uh, what my man was talking about over here is I took $35,000 in debt to start my trading career on credit cards. I was 22 at the time with no fucking money, man. I was working construction, but I'm ballsy. I take big risks. I, I've always shot from the hip. That's how I, I, my dad's like, I guess I got it. The level of fucking stress that I, I almost got sick because 
you got to get your life right first. And that's the best thing Bao's ever taught in 20 years is if you trade, it's called a barrier to entry, right? Getting started at anything. The barrier to entry in trading is you need some money, but you need a mindset too. So if you go in with debt and your life isn't right, and you're fighting with your girlfriend, you got a beat up car that you can't even afford that car. The last thing you should do is be worrying about trading. This doesn't necessarily mean education. You can still get an MIC membership and still learn on the side. My God, it's still like getting a real estate book and learning real estate. You don't have to act on it yet though and provide that pressure yourself. So if I could go back in time, if I had a kid, if I had a son at 10, he's or whatever, 17 when I was, 22, and he's like, hey, I wanna get started in trading. Sure, get an educational course. Don't act on it, but a simulator. Don't go into debt, get your life right. I built years of bad habits. I was trying to trade it from underwater. I'm still dealing with those bad habits. You start with someone like Alex, treats like a business for minute one, have the money to do so, et cetera, et cetera. That's gonna develop really different habits. And when you know anything about habits, when you have habits, they're hard to break. So get your life right first. Doesn't mean you can't get in a course somewhere, whatever, it, hopefully it's an MIC if you like MIC. Get a simulator and take it slow. And then once you get some money in it, now you can really try. But man, to start backwards, you're gonna go backwards. I'm not, I'm not very good yet with market cycles and anything else as far as uh, what I'm gonna, which uh, method and technology I'm gonna apply to my trading. Uh, so, and so I was wondering uh, with the watch list, are, are you guys uh, applying, you probably just do this automatically without thinking about it, but are you kind of applying some of the market cycle into uh, what's your preference for the day, whether you're gonna be doing the low hanging fruit, first red day, obviously if we see those, we're kind of jumping on that. But really what I'm asking is, your method for the day, are you kind of focusing on that on, on that, as far as what cycle we're in, and how the market's doing, with what you're going to be doing, long and shorting? Because I know you guys do both. The problem is you're too worried about the watch list and that. And you, and during this time, you were lazy not to learn another strategy. And so what happens is if you're stuck to doing one thing and that one thing is no longer valid, you're fucked. So the problem is not that one thing. It's the fact that, you know what? It's like you had all this time to prepare for this shit, but you assume that's going to happen. So that's what happens when these guys can't do anything else except that one, one way to do it, okay? And so I, I'm able to do what I do well because I don't rely just on one thing. And, and so I'm able to do the first bounce when things are going crazy. I lost a lot on the short side. So I, I had to go long. Now I, I can go short, don't need to go long. But eventually markets come back where it could be a pump and dump, but the AMC comes back, uh, game stock, I mean, the, the shorts are getting killed. If you can only short, you're dead. Make sense? Yeah. Well, during that time, all the long, it's fucking easy money. But now it's completely opposite, and that's why you're like, oh fuck, I don't know what to do. So remember me in the room, I always tell you guys, when things are fucking slow, start to learn new things. And so, so when, is, when can you learn new things? Only when things are slow. And so instead of crying when there's nothing, you use that time. This is, a, this is your opportunity to learn a new thing. We're just sitting there doing absolutely jack shit, waiting for it. You know? And so I want all you guys to be able to learn both sides. You don't have to trade short, you don't have to trade long. But just the moment that you start learning, how do you know you're not better at short short seller than a long? You know what I'm there's cycles in the market. There's times where short sellers really have to sit on the bench, and there's times where long traders really have to sit on the bench. Right now, the market's everybody's scared of Putin going into you, you know, Ukraine yeah, yeah, or you know, like Russia and things like that, and Biden or whatever. Politically, it doesn't matter. But maybe there's a lack of opportunity in small caps, options, guys. This is a funny story because like we had to fact check it if it was real. It was so great. Like, because, you know, we want to make sure it's legit before we promote it. Because um, this is huge. When you trade options, you can trade with a much smaller account. I don't know if you guys know that. So, we had a member start with... Uh, Steven, where are you at? Steven? Is Steven still here? What, I think it was one of Steven's guys. Oh, Steven's back there. I think it was one of Steven's guys. Dude, the guy came in MIC with $1,300. I didn't even know this was possible myself. Turned in 70 k with options. Is that nuts? Like, dude, we had to fact check this guy. And and maybe it was because the small cap market was slow, but that's an opportunity. You know what I mean? You're trading Nvidia. You can trade. I'm telling you, this is a good point. Because uh, with options, there is no pattern day trader rule. You can fucking scalp all day long as long as you want, right? And so, and so, so those are the ads. If you have a small account, maybe you try different things. You, it, so, like, you're like, oh, I, I, there's nothing that bounces. But I'm like... 
or you just rely on that one easy ass setup <laughs> and if it doesn't come you're fucked <laughs> you know what i'm saying so during that time you can learn all this stuff like the guy it was option the reason he did that because he only had 1300 fucking dollars yeah his resources were a little bit on the smaller side didn't mean there was an opportunity to learn something you, yeah, instead of waiting but now what happens is okay he's made all this money and I hope he's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> you make all the money, you're not necessarily make, make sense? Keep it unless you learn. So it's kind of like, okay, maybe he became successful because his, his hands were tied. He, he cannot lose. And so him being able to only make one trade a week because he only had $1,300 fucking dollars is the reason why he's more selected and he's winning. Yeah, seriously. And maybe like the moment he, he has now $70,000, he's going to make tons of mistakes because he thinks that he can get away with it. But the reason he's successful before because he was so focused. The point of the options is there's always movement in the market. So if small caps are dead, every now and then it happens. But, you know, we still trade them. Like, but, okay, you're trading one trade in a day versus, hey, a normal day, dollar five, six trade, 15 trade, nice channel trader. Maybe you don't have that that day. A couple trades a week, especially if you trade like our moderator, Bear, who gets really high and really low, but he goes all in with like one stock a week, right? There's always movement. And just keep it simple. Like Bao said, when it's slow, that is your opportunity to learn something new. When the small cap market is slow, I'm in the large cap room just watching, learning, seeing how I could adapt. Doesn't mean that I'm going to go full size like I do on small caps, but that is my opportunity. That is my time to learn something new. So just keep it simple. You could learn options. You could learn this, learn that. But when it's slow, use that time to catch up on all the other things that you missed out on. Like when we went along during the crazy days where we, we were too scared to short. Yeah. We, you, we had no choice but to go along. You, you need to learn one. Right? You don't start in 12th grade for a reason. You start in first grade. So you need to learn one thing first. Sanders was talking earlier, like one hour, like he hasn't been trading a lot. Why? Because to me, I told him, I congratulate him. Because if he's not trading a lot, that means that it's not, he's not hitting his lines. And if he's not hitting his line, he's not trading. So he's disciplined. That's why I don't see Ale, uh, Alex making $100,000 every day consistently, because he doesn't find something that is in within what he likes. So I, I told Sanders, hey man, really good, because that takes discipline. And trading is all about discipline. If you don't have discipline in your life, you're, you're, you're supposed to do that, okay? So it's like, yeah, you, you said right. You have to learn one strategy to become good with it. But once you learn that one strategy, don't don't rely on that only one strategy. That's uh, the problem. That's the, that's, that's, that's the thing. Sense. Makes sense. You're so comfortable. You're very good at that. And now you you're fucked. You can't go. You can't go short. And f for the next five years, it could be a recession. And you're fucked if you cannot fucking go short. And things don't fucking bounce. But you are so consistent that you're scared to to expand the playbook because. You're lazy. That's that's my point. I'm so fucking lazy, bro, where these things are so easy to me. And so it dried up. Like, penny stocks dried up. I had I, I fucking had to force myself to start trading NASDAQ stocks. He's talking about OTC pink sheets, which he killed it with the Fannie Mae stuff. That's dead now. And during that time, I should have been fucking looking at all these other things. Because I thought it would never fucking end. Yeah. And so, like, same thing with... Uh, uh, short selling. I thought I can store it forever. And then remember that AMC shit, the uh, the meme stocks. I'm like, holy fuck, dude! Two weeks, yeah, two weeks. If you're dead, I'm, I'm fucking dying. Yeah, I can't short anything. So, so I forced myself go on. Two weeks. That's a long time. And guys, this no, doesn't. AMC is more than two weeks, dude. That game stock. No, still... no, that whole cycle was like at least two weeks. It may have been a month. Dude, it's the a year. point is, guys, <laughs> is like when you learn something, and the key thing is what Alex said. He's in learning from Joe Kelly, dude, because Joe does full options. He just does mostly small caps. It's not you go gamble on something else because your first bounces aren't this week and the cycle's over. Go learn. Dude, we got a video library of a thousand videos. I haven't even seen every video that we've ever turned out. It's almost about, there's so much. Maybe you guys. The point is, the point is, this doesn't mean go throw your money at the rent, but you can learn. You can go back to school. That's what MIC is. It's school. Well, remember what you said? You're like, are you guys going to put a watch list for me to copy? <laughs> but during that time, it's like, you see what you're saying? It's like, so now you depend on, and that's, 
And that mentality is why, in my opinion, people are do not learn. We want to, we don't alert people on purpose. You're forced to fucking learn. Otherwise, you will be dependent. And so we didn't put a watch list for so long because I'm scared that people would not learn if they just copy that fucking watch list. Guys, if we did alerts, hey, we so got learn in XYZ. how they build a watch list and build your own watch list. Exactly. If we did alerts in a live share screen every day, you guys wouldn't have a work ethic. You guys wouldn't make it compared to what we do now. You may make it take a lot longer. You'll build really fucking bad habits. We do it for you. People hit us up all the time. Okay, I'll join this person because you don't live screen share every day. We go, okay, we're actually breeding real fucking traders who think for themselves. It's like getting into politics. Oh, you, you just become a Democrat or Republican just because your parents are. You don't actually know what you stand for or what you like politically. You see, you gotta learn it. It's the same thing, man. So it's like, it's trial by do. You gotta do it. So learn the process. Don't just copy watch this. Use that watch list and learn how he came up with that watch list. That's the that, point. That's the thing. That's the point. And when you're not trading, study. Yeah. Study something else because you, look, look, look. Everybody overcomplicates trading. You can boil down a process. Dude, every single day, if I'm doing small caps, it's an outer line or it's a death candle. That's it. Once you learn the process, it's actually simple. You have time to learn something else. But when you're trying to learn everything at once and you don't have an identity at first, you're like, oh shit, now you're just overloaded. Commit to something, get good at it. Then when you have time to learn something else, branch to the next thing. But make some money first and get some consistency. But but there's a lot to learn. Long-term investing, swing trading, options trading, dividend investing, small cap short selling, long small cap short selling, long big cap short big cap. You got a lot of options and we provide all of them. I, would say it's a really thing about I check the watch list every day, of course. But the thing that I do is I make my own watch list beforehand. Hell yeah. Before I, and Alex posts it before anything. I already have my lines, my stock selection, anything. Then when Alex posts his watch list, I will use that to confirm mine or to learn what he is doing differently. So instead of just waking up at nine and you know playing off of Alex's watch list, because then you're not learning to fight for yourself. You're not learning to trade for yourself. So instead, make your own watch list, then later learn off of what Alex is saying in Alex's watch list, because that way you become dependent upon him if you do that. You don't want to be dependent upon anybody. Even though they make it easy, you don't want to do that. So that's just a trick that I have learned to do is make your own before you ever look at Alex's to know whether or not you're really doing it right yourself. That's the best way. And, and that's why I don't put a watch list out. Because if I put a watch list out, everyone's going to copy my shit. Alex says, makes sense. Tom and so, and so now, it's like for, and they do it for you now. That's what pre preventing you guys from, from having to fucking do anything on your own. You're lazy. You, 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 you just want to be food fed. I mean, spoon fed, right? Dude, I'm and that's right how you fucking lose. The watch list alone is almost worth $500 a month if you want to go value. But we provide that because we want you to have that guiding light. You don't copy it. You do what Samuel does. You create your own watch list and you see if you can do the lines. And then if Alex's lines every day, you match up with him, you're learning. You know how to do a watch list now. So the hardest thing to do is to educate someone. We don't make much money in MSC because we don't put out pump and dumps. We don't do live share. We don't do a, a fucking alert, news alert service. And so Dude, look, not only look that, at, it goes back into the- Take a look at that Zach Morris guy. Look at the, the Atlas group. They're free. They make a shit ton of fucking money. And I'm being an actual against you like, what the fuck? The, the reason they do that is because they have no other choice. And so for us, we have a choice. Meaning like, I want to really teach you guys to be self-sufficient. Those guys can never go out in public like we do because they will get killed. They cause a lot of people lose their life savings, right? And so what do Alex and I want? We have enough money. So even, that's because I'd rather be able to walk around and not have you guys try to stab me because I took your fucking last Two hundred dollars, right? And none of those guys can ever be seen in public. And so you guys have to understand. Like, I love the fact you guys are here because you want to learn. We're, we're we fucking way too fucking nice, dude. Like the watch list. Like, I didn't. I never want the watch list because I know what's gonna happen is the fact that the reason we put the watch list and you will stop learning to do the watch list. But we do that is because like I don't want. I don't want you guys to have to lose all your fucking money trying to get to the point where you can build your own watch list. So use that watch list to get to that point. You know, but so we, we're trying to find a fine line between giving you too much easy shit and causing you guys not to have to work on your own. Well, and I, and I know how to say it perfect. Let's hold it. It's like a trophy. Um, 
James Freelander, you guys know who James Freelander most of you? Yeah. James Freelander was a guy, and I can attest to this because I taught James Freelander first personally. So he was my tab partner because I really liked him. He's a funny guy. He's cracked funny. Dave Vaughn when he was a part of MIC. Um, I would split between tab partners between those guys and those guys. I just loved him. Their humor was the same as mine. We're raunchy. We're 30 minutes. James came to MIC, and he's a huge mod now. Makes $2,000 a day, probably two, three Gs, whatever. Doesn't matter. He made barely $100 a day when he first joined. I got him on the phone every single day. I said, James, I'm going to guide you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you what, Bao talk, what Alex talked about. Dude, there's no coincidence that this fucking kid, James Freelander, had the best work ethic I've ever seen out of a member. <coughs> Top 1%. Look at him now. Look at the kid now. He's a he's a mini version of Alex. And there's no coincidence that any member worth their salt now watch every video. Or or the majority of uh, what they're interested in. So a first red day, um, a channel trade, a death line short, a low hammer, whatever, whatever. Master something, but there is no coincidence that all the members who make a decent amount of money, make a living trading and stuff, dude, they work their balls off and they watch every video we put on the subject. James is the best example we have. Like for Tosh, he, he's our fucking like one of my best friends, right? And I don't even share with him what I trade. <laughs> and then in the beginning, you're like, what the fuck, Bow? You could just, just throw me a bone. Throw me a fucking bone. But I know that if I threw you a bone, it's not going to help you. Because then I don't, I'm like, dude, you would not be who you are today. Same thing with James. Same thing with everybody. We can easily, let's say, like, give you a play, but then you're not going to learn the process. So remember my quote on, like, you can feed a man with a fish one day, or you can teach him to fucking fish for himself, right? I'm a fishing pole. Exactly. Yeah, so that's, that's the whole fucking shit. So right now, things fucking suck. But it's, it's kind of like, look at where all the people that were forced to learn, they now they're, they can stand on their own feet. Well, we hate saying shit like this because it sounds like guru marketing. But dude, James was a, he's a, he's a guy who owns a haircut place before he joined MIC. Bro, if you look at that average salary, that's like maybe $80,000. He just bought an I-8. It's like $200,000 Beamer. The point is, he learned how to trade, but he worked his nuts off. And if you make it's it too easy on someone, think about it, man. If you, if you make it too easy on your friend, how is that going to help? Real we can give you as many resources, scans, watch this, whatever. <laughs> Guys, man, if you gotta ask, like, what is VWAP when even Google's available? I mean, like, look, you just you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do what we can. Anybody who still questions anything, if you want to talk, we're just kind of ranting at this point, but. Tyler, you got something? You to... Oh, what? Anybody, so <coughs> if you want to come up, now's a chance for sure, but questions. I tr I trade between 9.30 and 10.30, but I wake up and start planning my trades. I wake up early to help everyone else, but if I didn't need to wake up early, I could wake up around 8 a.m. So call from 8 a.m. to 10.30, call it one hour to plan and one hour to trade. But the executions are one hour. Yeah. 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 Because I see Bao all day and hit, you're yeah. like, game suit. Yeah. And the reason why Bao would walk away at 1032, the reason why he doesn't is because he wants to stay and actually educate people on the rest of the trades for the rest of the day. He wants to show how many trades are available all day. But for me, I learned that I lose money after 1030, me too. so I have to walk away. Me too. I think I understand what you're trying to say. Because people think that, oh, we, we talk about, oh, you only work an hour a day. But the fact is... You actually wake up at eight. So for an hour and a half, you're doing this to, so actually two and a half hours, but only one hour. One hour is to execute, the other hour and a half is to plan. To plan. But the right. thing is, do you see? The planning is, is two and a half times longer than the actual execution. <clears throat> That's the point. No, 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 I, I, I see it with my husband and I, I wanted to say to other people here, but I was really impressed by both of your strategies. I'm a salesperson by nature, so I'm always impressed with how people formulate their business. I was really impressed with this two hour, but I was highly impressed with your in and out all day because it wasn't until I saw that for myself for you that I was like, I was like, Ada, you don't even gotta wait. This guy is just getting 20 cents. And he's like, no, no, no. I'm like, no, 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 watch him. I'm like, he's just grabbing it. That was the deal breaker. I, my really that, that's that. because I've been practicing for 15 years. <laughs> you see? So for Alex to be able to trade one hour and quit 
he needs to wake up at eight, which is an hour and a half before the market opens. And so I think I, I, I totally understand where you try to come from. Because you're like, you don't really trade only an hour. We say we trade an hour, but it's actually the trading to me is the planning. To me, that's the real trading. It's the fucking planning. The rest, yeah, I can put my orders in and fucking walk away. So for me, how long can I trade? Five minutes. It takes me five minutes to execute my fancy orders. I'm done. But the real training for me is waking up at 8 a.m. And, and planning. That's to me, is the real training. Makes the sense? money's made technically in the first 20 minutes of execution. He only needs 20 minutes of that. Now needs arguably five because he's the fantasy order king. It's the pre plan. It's the pre plan. Bigcharts.com, SEC filings, overhead. Go to uh, Dawson, replay the day the last time it's ran. What did it do? See price history. Does history repeat itself for today? That is shit you need to put. You need a blueprint going in. But the execution could be anywhere from five minutes to an hour, but we cut it off. Except Val, who says there might be someone in this in this um, in this group who has a job in the morning who can only trade in the middle of the day. He's for that guy. He doesn't need three hundred dollars of scalp in the middle of the day. He made eight K in the morning. First ten minutes. The, the, the thing is, is he, those guys. So for me, I mean, if you take your twenty cents, that's two hundred bucks, whatever it may be. And for most people, that's fucking great. But the problem is this. So that may not be enough for you to support your family you quit your job and so to get to that point where i have to keep staying around to keep do more than that makes sense and the thing that you understand is the fact that hey man uh what is the realistic goal is it to make three million dollars or to make 200 bucks a day if your goal is to make 200 bucks a day you don't need the perfect fucking A plus fucking setup. You just need to make your fucking twenty cents and get the fuck out to go to work. So you agree that the first thing people should worry about is just being greed, whether it's twenty bucks or two hundred a day. It doesn't matter. And this is what my next IG live is gonna be about. Like all these guys are popping up and doing the 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 RR like risk reward. I'm gonna hold this shit all fucking day. Makes sense. And I'm telling you, those guys are arrogant as hell because they. How about how say they, they, you understand that they went through years of losing their ass, and now they find success and they want to show off to the fucking world. Like it's a holy grail. But the problem is this: the problem is if you start, they didn't start out. No one starts out training like the way they do. There's no way. The bear had been talking to me for five years, and so in, the, in order for him to be able to to do those things, he's 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 got enough money. And he got to the point where he can go through three trades, five trades, and lose all day and not be discouraged. So if you're starting out trading for the first time, you need to pick the easiest strategy, which is the one-to-one -one risk -to ratio, 90% win rate, because that's going to motivate you more. Imagine if you do the three-to-one, four-to-one, and you lose three times in a row. You're going to be just so just fucking encouraged, right? You're going to give up. But if you keep making... These hundred dollar scouts, which is a ninety percent risk reward, you're like, damn, I can do this. And then the moment that you learn more, then you can expand to more avenues. But you will never ever even get to the point where you, where you will get that opportunity because you've already been defeated by this man. I see these guys on a forty one risk reward, and I'm like, I'm losing three times in a row. And you never make it to the fourth one that you will make money on. So you need to. As a new trader, to be rewarded all the time with, hey, I did a good fucking job. Because you're, you're so insecure that you don't know what's a good job and what's not. And the only way to be reassured is if the market is telling you you made money three out of four times. And then you're like, damn, I know what I'm doing. Imagine the four to one risk reward guy. They only need that one winner. But they're not discouraged because they lose the first three times. But you will if you're a beginning trader. It's like win ratios, guys. It's like, look, you got to have a 97 win ratio. He goes through amateur ranks. He's fighting other amateur. If, if Mike Tyson did go through the amateur ranks and he goes pin it against a professional, he would get knocked out and be discouraged. He would have fucking a 0 and 12 record. So you have to put yourself in a position where you're not going to get discouraged and you, have, you must get the easy wins first. Makes sense. You, if you were trying to skip steps and trying to fight a fucking level 25 dragon and you got a fucking, like, no clothes, no armor on, that, 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 that's the role playing analogy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what you're doing. You have to take your 
level of the pit. Because I'm always looking for an analogy outside of trading so you can really realize how everything's symbolic, right? You guys know the fighter Jake Paul, for God's sakes? Alex makes money on like almost every fight he does. <laughs> Dude, Jake Paul was this fucking YouTuber kid that came into like boxing and picked up. <laughs> These guys are making fun of our strategies. And the reason they made fun of our strategies is because Alex basically that has no stress and he's making all this kind of money, right? And so you don't see them posting any of their charts and none of that shit. And I, I shy away from posting a PL. But I chose I post charts. And so with a small trading account, I want to show them that no, this year with that twenty five thousand dollars, I doubled that leveling up like if you're just starting out guys, man, you have to realize that these guys have been training for a long ass time to get to where they are. And I see some of you guys going way faster than you need to go. And and that's what screws you up a lot. Because you, you you are trying. So when I say no offense to the young kids, I see them posting like two to five, two to five years, I would be worth 10 million bucks. And I'm like, bro, when you, when you do that, you already fucked yourself because what you, 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 you're trying to jump the gun and you're not in. in and you're not going through the process of fucking getting to that point. It's like Jake Paul, you know, that, that guy, he's fighting old men. Wrestlers and retired guys. It's brilliant. Stock selection, fighter selection, get some momentum, get some confidence. And if you are talking about making $2 million, $10 million in the next couple of years and you're 18 years old, just starting out, you see what happens. You are now doing things which... Is not you. You you are pretending to know a lot of these things. You're pretending that you know, like like. So I see a lot of people switching this risk reward kind of thing, holding fucking all day shit. And I'm like, dude, man, you don't understand that. You, you, it's very hard to fucking do that and be encouraged to keep going. Okay, it, take your fucking money every fucking day. Because in order for you to get to that risk reward thing, you have to have a bankroll. You have to be okay with taking max losses across fucking four days in a row and be okay with it. And and Bear he is like, dude, he, he even says. So when you're playing Call of Duty or whatever video you got from 17 year old there with them, you're playing Call of Duty, you're playing Halo, and you get a kill. That gives you a dopamine kick. When you do something, look, we're not knocking Bear's strategy at all. He's a moderator. He's great at what he does. It's very advanced. Because when you start and you see 10 first bounces in a day and you try three of them and you get one or two, you have a win. It's like a, it tells you that you, something you're doing is starting This to is work. a great point, okay? And this is the same thing with slot machines. The blinking lights give you satisfaction, the dopamine. And what they do is like they know that they're going to take they can take all your money, but if they take all your money too quickly, you you would never come back again. Never, yeah, so they, they take three percent of your money for the rest of your fucking life, <laughs> right? The, the edge on a slot machine is just four percent, three percent. They pay out ninety-seven percent, whatever the hell it may maybe, right? But if they make it too rigged, they take all your money the first time, you won't be a repeat customer. They rather you be hooked for the rest of your life on this drug than to kill you. That's why pharmaceuticals, they don't want to cure you. And they don't want to kill you either. They want you to use their shit for the rest of your fucking life. It's a business. It's either cure me or kill me, motherfucker, right? <laughs> well, Bell, I, I actually have a funny story for you guys. So, <laughs> dude, this is another thing. You guys have no idea how blessed you are starting right now. Because nobody's fees. Even Cobra, where are my Cobra dudes at? It's such small fees, man. So I've been trading, like, I think it's upwards of nine years to me and Alex are the same. Dude, I started on TD Ameritrade. And I still use TD Ameritrade, but for long-term investing in options. Outside of that, don't day trade. I started, Tim Sykes, nine years ago. I was following and I market ordered on mobile. I actually got good at that, believe it or not. Like I never blew an account, I never bled an account, but I'd make a lot of money, lose it immediately. Dude, one day, one day, you guys have no idea how lucky you are. What, my first year of trading, I had $700 in commissions from TD Ameritrade because it was $10 to buy, $10 to sell. $700 in a TD Ameritrade commission because I'm in the beginning, what do you do? I need three cents, I need three cents, and you get it. So I made $1,200 that day, 700 goes to commissions, TD Ameritrade. Shit's free now. 
You guys get, dude, dude, invest in your education, go slow, nothing is get rich quick. Anything we do today, we are not hyping you up like you're gonna make a lot of money. We don't do that bullshit. This is a career. He treated like great. He sold the rims off his car and said, this is do worth the fucking die after he blew up his first account. Dude, this is a career. This is not a get rich. You will not get rich quick overnight. Look, ask how many people have blown up. Guys, how many have blown up here? So just be honest, man. I never blew up, but my God, did I bleed for a while. It's a lot of people, right? Did you kind of think it was get rich quick in the beginning? Like, like, be honest, guys. Like, yeah, it was kind of get rich quick, right? That's all the crypto idiots right now. Look, there's a lot of people making money in crypto. There's a lot of people not because, but the people that are making money in crypto know, like, they research, right? Utility, long term. The guys that make want to turn a sixty-four thousand Bitcoin in one hundred fifty, it's now at thirty-four. Liquidated, boom. Margin calls everywhere. Get rich quick. It doesn't work. And, and this is why we call it the low hanging fruit. I do it on purpose. Like, Man, you can either eat the fucking little ugly apple that's hanging every day or try to climb for the fucking ripe, and delicious shit life. and, and fall off and die. Yeah. Make sense? <laughs> you guys seen a pomegranate tree? You gotta just reach out and grab it at your island. Low hanging fruit. It's the easiest exactly. trade that day. Coconut tree. Coconut tree. Like you try to climb a pine tree. <laughs> so, same thing with these trading strategies, guys. Do the easy shit first. Some people are not happy with easy stuff. That's for them. Most of us are happy making 200, 500 bucks a day. I got to the point where I make so much, I'm not happy. Because I mean, everyone's different, right? And so, so I cl try to climb for the fucking highest fruit and I fucking fall off. You know? But the fact that I try for that is because I ate all the low hanging fruit for fucking 10 years. <laughs> and, I, and for me, it's like I, I try something. And I, I'm thinking back, I'm like, fuck, I should have tried this shit a long time ago. Right? Imagine if I fucking was not a pussy. <laughs> I, I, I could be killing it. About that. Dude, the funniest thing I've ever heard Val say, and actually after nine years of friendship or eight years of friendship or whatever, one of my best friends, I ju we just found this out on one of the webinars. Dude, the only reason why he's probably not up like $7 million in the spy after 20 years of trading is they fucked you over your 401k and then he had a sour taste in his mouth. Right? Didn't you say that? Like, do you gotta tell this story? The, the, the thing is this, man. So I was, I'm very good at what I do, but shit. I am too fucking scared. And and so I was trading so consistently until one of my fucking dumbass crypto friends was making a ton of money. And then I'm like, this motherfucker is dumb as hell. You know? Like, making a ton of money. And so he he got me to slowly increase my risk. But the reason why he is now fucking driving Uber. This guy used to make 50000 a day, but then it's all gambling. Whereas he laughed at me for making fucking $300 a day back then, every fucking day. Oh, look at you. Make sense? But the, so the thing is kind of like, in order for you to be sustainable at that level, you need to, to build your fucking experience first. Imagine if the first time you have sex, you're having sex with a porn star. Wow. You, you would be so. Oh, oh, so. <laughs> it, it, I would be so embarrassed because I, she would basically <laughs> masturbate me to a point where, oh my you. god, I, I would be so scared. Like I suck, I suck. So, so you have to level up. Same thing with trading guys. Safe sex. Safe sex. Safe sex. <laughs> so I go with easy kills. <laughs> Now they come to him. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, oh hanging fruit. <laughs> That's like, this guy. What other topics? What are happened we covered today? Seriously. I just want you guys to questions. Like, yeah. questions. Any questions? Question. Hit us. So, you want to come up? That might be too much pressure. You don't have to come up. <laughs> hey, man. Hello, hello. Hey, my name is also Bao. Good to meet you. No way. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Oh, Good to meet Bao. you guys. You guys are like Bao. idols. I've followed you guys since like 2014. But uh, my question is, um, like hard work and discipline is what you, everybody says, oh, you just need hard work, discipline, and maybe a little bit of smarts to be good at trading. But you know that's not true. Cobra replied to me that's not true too. There's probably only like 5 to 1% of people that actually make it. So like, there's got to be some sort of intangible Something else. Like, There's what, a guiding what you, light. What do you think that is it's, that separates the ones that make it and the ones that don't? This bit, this business, you need a gyroscope in here that's telling you it's as much art as it is a science. You can know every... Dude, I know some of the most technical guys in the world. Statistics. 
data sheets. Excel everything. They're terrible when they first start because they're in here so much. They'll overthink everything. Great with analytics. Go get an okay, accounting job. You'll be a master. This this thing's an art. It, it's not, it, to me, it sounds like this, man. The reason why you're not able to do it is because you're not happy with with anything except the ultimate success. So I'll give you an example. Everybody wants to be a millionaire, right, guys? You know what the secret of being a millionaire is? Fucking study your ass off, go to fucking school, and, and we still don't do that. We fucking go drinking, we don't we don't save money, we do all this stuff. Make sense? And so the reason why I can teach you to make a hundred dollars a day, guaranteed, but the moment you make a hundred dollars a day, you're not happy. You're not happy with that. You're like, if I can make a hundred, make two hundred. If I make a thousand, make ten thousand. So the secret is be able to to humble yourself down to the point where when is enough enough? Think about you guys right now, right? You guys, you you kids are, you, you putting that goal in yourself, and let's say you reach that goal, you're fucked. Now you now you, you can never make less and be happy. You all you will be miserable. You you be making a hundred million, be miserable, because then you look you want to make a billion, and so eventually you will crash. Because you know what, I mean? the, the, you need to have an ending point. Trading there is no end. And I tell Alex all this time. You see my old video? Like, it's a video game with no fucking ending. Your goal is to make the highest score, and I got the highest score at that point with that trade, and I, I and that killed me, because I thought all my problems would go away the moment I fucking made that million dollars in like four hours. But when that made that, I'm like, holy fuck, it didn't fucking cure anything. It it made me realize like, holy shit, I did all this shit, and I'm still not fucking happy. Hey, you got that Ferrari the same day though. <laughs> <laughs> but by no, but by, by no, but by doing that, it, I'm like, dude, now I'm pressured to fucking perform. To make three million in one trade versus one point six. Yes, correct. So, so I want to add to something that you just. I came from Puerto Rico four years ago. I didn't. I'm not gonna say I lost everything, but the house I can show you pictures where I used to live, and I I came here with nothing. I had twenty five thousand dollars in my bank account, and we started from zero. And from there, we started building up, building up, building up, building up. Until COVID started, then I, I started day trading full time, but it was a negotiation, a, a really intense negotiation with her because she didn't want me to day trade full time. But I, I've been busting my balls for a year and a half, working, 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 working. So I have so much, like I have enough money in order to trade and be sustainable. If you trade and you need $200, and you trade with those $200. And at the end of that month, if you lose that $200, you can't pay your car, you're emotionally attached to that money. So you should not be trading that money. You should build a bank account. It's doable, it's doable. I'm, I'm, I'm proof of that. So I came from zero. Like I told you, $25,000, six, I, I, six months before I get my, my first job. And then I started grinding, 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 grinding until the point I, I am right now. It's a matter of how you see it. And I'm grateful every day. I'm, when I joined the community, I've never been in another uh, trading community. I've, I've known like a lot of stories of people that have gone three, four. I'm grateful that this was the first community I, I, I came in. The, the fact of the word community, to me, is so important, man, because community is like family. Like you're building something together. So that's why I'm in love with them, with, with these guys, because it's not bullshit what they teach. All right, okay, this one's better. Yeah, uh, I, I consider Bal actually very lucky the way he's able to do what he does. Vietnam, on a boat, Cracker saved his life. Sometimes that will instill some real inability in you to part with money and have this death grip on $5. I don't it's gamble, guys. I don't fucking gamble. If you are a gambler, you need to boom, remember you're a gambler. And so if you're a gambler and you don't fucking have a safety net, put in a max daily loss. Have them fucking auto liquidate your shit. I don't need to do that because I'm not going to put all my money in. I already, I, I take all my money out like Alex does every week. Yeah, you have to. We do have a very, very finite number of members that will use one share. Even they've been trading a couple years because they're so scared. And here's what I say, here's what I say. Whatever reason you're scared to risk money, because there's a lot of people, then there's a lot of not, you know, there's a lot of people that are not scared to risk money. They tend to get there quicker. Read self-help books on what that fear is linked to. 
that's an esoteric thing. And this is more spiritual, like me and Claudio talk a lot about, but you have to iron out why you can't risk money. Because if you can't risk money, you can't do this career. I'm sorry, man. I'm not here to bullshit you. And, and OTC, I had $4 million sitting there. The reason why I'm not scared is because I can never feel $4 million on the fucking- Yeah, you're not going to believe that. Yeah. One time I tried to trade Google the same way. I leveraged out $8 million of a Google position. Like, what the fuck am I fucking doing? The point is gamblers are very strong word. It's very not, Trading is not opposite. gambling, guys. It's I'm not gambling not when you rock the house. Gambling. But Val's right. It's it's like whatever you want to it's call it. Rigged it's, that's game. that's just semantics. Trading is a rigged fucking game. There's but, a reason why Goldman Sachs do not fucking lose every year. You can bring the odds so exponentially in your favor. Yes, some poker players can do that. They're professional gamblers. I want to I want to tie it back to what you asked in the beginning. Is there a secret sauce if you're missing? You know the formulas, discipline. You know the formulas, hard work. Is there a secret sauce missing? I would say the secret sauce is how bad do you want it, right? Because everyone knows the formula to lose weight: diet and exercise. But everyone wants to find a weight loss pill. You know the formula for trading, discipline, and hard work. But are you sticking to a max loss, a max size, stop loss, stop loss everything? Or are you going to be the guy that says, all right, I know I should stop out here, but I'm not going to. Or I know I should be trading this setup, or I'm not going to. So to answer your question, it's a matter of you. Are you sticking to what you know the formula is? Or are you looking for that weight loss pill? Anything in life has risk. Right? That's what it is. That's what I was trying to so, say. So yeah, when, when you start a business, I used to work in real estate development. I saw like people put their life savings into a restaurant. That's to me like a lot of risk. You know what I mean? That's restaurants are really risky. When you go to college, you're risking your betting that you'll get paid out more in the long run than your student debt will. When you get married, that's also a risk. I mean, you're risking everything you do in life is a risk. To me, this is no different. There's a risk, but you've got to learn how to manage it. And you've got to be okay with it and comfortable with it. And if you're not, then you want to be risking less. So it's really just about your, your comfort level. But anything in, in, in life you do, you're going to you're gonna risk. There's going to be risk. Professional risk. Okay, then that's probably much better. Yeah, about yeah, yeah. Exactly Professional risk. Because yeah. yeah. that, that is a very strong word, gambler. Like, gambler, uh, like a madass. But... <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> you know what you're also about? Predetermine your risk. Every trade begins with predetermining your risk and setting your risk around. Yeah. And then, then you will never be scared again. If Professional you, risk. And if you're scared of you lose a dollar, this is not the right industry for you. But I mean, that, if that's, that's, if, that's if, what I was saying. If that's, that's the case, saying. how do you, how do you, Go to college, or get married, or buy a house, or do anything. Everything's a risk. Everything man. has risk. So like, it's it's weird when I see people are scared to place a trade for five or ten bucks, but then they're like buying a house, so they're getting married. They're and Stephen, all I was saying is those are the guys that have the hardest time ever. Yeah. So now you have to get to the root of what is why why am I so scared to risk money in the stock market? But I'm able to. I mean, if, if you go to a nice don't restaurant, get a real estate deal with no research. Like, if you go to a nice restaurant, restaurant spend 100, 200 bucks. You're you're actually risking that you'll like it. It might be bad. It might make you sick. You don't know. He reads Yelp like, like crazy, so he never <laughs> risks. Like, <laughs> like, dude, he lives on Yelp. No, but well, like thing, everything has but, risk. But the thing is, like, you know, what, so example, like, I'm, I'm not scared of fucking gamble. I'm actually scared of gamble. I'm, I'm not scared of day trade. I'm scared of gamble. You're not scared of risk. I am yes. so scared of betting hundred dollars. You see me on the casino. I'm I am fucking too. shaking my head. Yeah, same. And, but then I, I could go in millions of dollars in the stocks. That'd be fucking cool. Same. But I'm scared to walk up to a random fucking girl. I get rejected. But Todd, no fucking problem. <laughs> you see, everybody. So, so, you no. Know, that's the thing. He's like, dude. Everybody's risk is different. If, and you work within the parameters. If I was a pussy all the time, I would not have a girlfriend. If, if. Tosh is too scared to trade. He will not make money. So that's how it is. So you find the balance and you 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 fill in the, the holes. What you have to be comfortable with risk. That's it. That's that's all. That's as simple as what we were saying. You have to be comfortable with risk. Everybody risks. You're a it. professional risk taker. That's, that's the. Not taking a risk is a risk in itself. I mean, I mean flying a plane is a risk. Like anything you do is a risk. Another well, yeah. question. Yep. They are coming more interesting. Um, you guys say how Alex has like a superhuman ability to be like emotionally neutral, right? So I want to ask you, um, like, were you really like that from the beginning, or did you develop that skill? Uh, well, look at his demeanor, man. Everything about Alex is a cool rock. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how I've been for a very long time, uh, for as long as I can remember. But yeah. trading, no matter what, is a very emotional game. It's you're up and down a bunch of money, whether it be $50, $50,000, you're up a bunch of money. For me, what keeps me calm is that I have a plan. I know what I'm going to do if things go right and if things go wrong. I have a strategy for when I'm going to take the profit and an eject button in case things go wrong. So because I plan my trades, because I'm prepared, I have nothing to worry about. 
So that kind of helps me and gives me an advantage on top of that. But yeah, Xander, I mean, people are by nature more emotional than others. You know, that's just the... But Bao is more emotional than me, but still, he's a fantastic trader because that's he plans. He plans his trades. Yeah. yeah, and like when you go through like a huge drawdown or maybe like a huge win streak where you're up a lot or down a lot, like, are you like emotionally stable or like like totally normal like you're not too excited you're not too depressed or when i first started trading i was excited i was emotional until i started to get used to it and it's like it's like okay let's say the first time you get drunk it's an amazing feeling you have no idea what's going on but after the 1000th time you kind of get used to it so trading is the same thing as you build up and get confidence and make wins the wins start to feel like a normal day and it should feel like a normal day I expect to make money every single fucking day. See that mindset? You guys see, hear that? You coming so, in like so maybe you'll make NFL, money. Right? Right? If you, score, you don't score any touchdown. When you score, you celebrate. You have the best. But Tom Brady. Yeah. Yeah. He expects every, it. He expects it. Day. LeBron James expects to kill it. Have you seen LeBron James play in person? It's insane. He expects it. Thank you. That's good, dude. That's, that's good. I was talking with, with Steven earlier, and what you were saying about like you know not having a goal of like you know three million or five million you know, within the next couple of years. Like I was talking with Steven, I said at, at the end of this year, at the end of 2022, my only goal is I want to be able to travel. Like I, the lifestyle that yeah. we we've been talking a lot, like that's what I want. But on with that, like people who do have those goals of like, I want to make this amount of money in this amount of years or whatnot. You know, like you were saying that can be risky, but for you, like what you just said of, I expect to make money every day. You know, like you have a mindset of you're going to be a winner type of thing. So how do you balance that having the mindset of I'm going to be a winner, I'm going to hit my goals, the confidence, but not, um, you know, setting yourself up for trying to hit unrealistic goals and throwing in too much money, stuff like that. Does that make sense? That's like, because like money, don't, money, making money in the market doesn't matter because I can do it. But what matters would be like when, when things, when you're insecure, that's when fucking shit fucks up. So when you're insecure, you make goals like that. So I'm insecure, let's say I'm making it like, uh, I go online uh, dating, and, and, and I'm like, I, I expect to get a lot of acceptance, but I get nothing. And, and, and so I put my Ferrari up, and everybody's fucking hitting Dude, I have, Bal, I have Bal's trading level of confidence in Bumble app. <laughs> so, so think about this. Why are you giving yourself these goals? It's because you, you it's, it's fake, bro. But you see, every he big guy has so he's goals. so confident in himself. It's not confident in the goals. He's, he's like, dude, I'm so good. I'm gonna make money. He, I have no goals. That's that. It just, will come. It'll come. And if it doesn't come, no big deal. Yeah. I think you can focus on the goals, or you can focus on just making yourself as good dude, as dude. humanly possible. That the goals just like are like, yeah, dude. Of course, I'm gonna travel by the end of the year. I'm yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. I think that. Yeah, what's your ass So uh, my, my goal was just to get a bunch of likes on Tinder, but I got nothing. That's <laughs> what so I'm trying to tell you. So, so if I came with the, the expectation of, it's okay if no one matches me and wants to go out with me. And, and therefore, other people will see that, hey, this guy's a normal guy. He's not a weird guy trying to be fake and try to pretend and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So when I see you posting that, no offense, man, I love this I guy. didn't post it. So, <laughs> well, whoever does. Whoever does, does, right? Whoever does. does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This but is what it is. Yeah. And so what happens when you do that, it's like it, it's, you put unnecessary pressure on yourself, yeah. bro. Because it's a limitation, even on good. Yeah. It's just a limitation. I have to reach this or I'm a loser. Yeah. I have to reach this or I'm a loser. Yeah, I've, I've never had the money goal. Like I said, my goal is travel. I, I don't remember who posted the money goal, but my thing is always I just want to travel. Because you know your happiness. Have the freedom. That's yeah. the point. Yeah, and okay, I wanted to say this earlier. When y'all are talking about happiness, none of you mentioned anything about money. Steven wants to travel. You have your family. Family. Like, your happiness doesn't come from your money. And I think that no amount of money that you get is going to bring you the joy that comes from inside knowing yourself being at peace so that was like really powerful for me is that nobody mentioned anything about money or how much money you need when it comes to your happiness and that's like so key for people who are going after that it's not about the money brother money makes things better it makes life easier but you could be a billionaire and be unhappy mm -hmm. i know dude i know very rich people that are Miserable. Jesus. I wouldn't trade lives with them in a minute, and they are a thousand times my network. See, that's, that's the thing, man. Well, the reason Jeff Bezos is spoiled a... because I don't, I don't care because I have the money. But in order for you to get to the point of happiness, you need to have a level of self-sufficiency financially. Yeah. So that's also wrong. Everyone cares about the money, but how much is enough? 
Make sense? Yeah. Exactly. But don't make someone sound like money's not important. Look, money's important. Money's, money's yeah. the sixth sense that heightens the other five senses. It <laughs> is. You can afford good food. You can travel. You can provide for your family. Like, it's important. But if you're not happy now, right in your life, I'm not talking about everything. There's always something to be grateful for. If you're not happy right now, you'll not be happy with 100 million. Dude, I was happy when I had fucking $2,000 in my bank account at 18. I was ecstatic. I lived the life I love. I still do. So more money is great. It's great. You gotta find happiness in you, dude. If you guys ever Stock see- Mark will never bring it directly. If you guys ever, ever see those documentaries on people that won the lottery and where are they now, mm -hmm. their lives are all screwed up. Yeah. 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 Win 18 million. I mean, was it, there was a famous story of a trash man, waste yeah. management, who worked for waste management. Dude, coke, strippers, that's yeah, what yeah. he spent all his money on. Now he's a trash man again. It, it, like, like, it's not outside of yourself. It's in here, dude. Yeah. Are you a good person? Do you have morals? Do you like, dude, I love money. Like I try every day to make as much money as I can, but I don't love money enough to screw over a person. I would never make, dude, you couldn't pay me a hundred million dollars to inconvenience a person, but I love money. I'll do whatever I can to make as much ethical money as I can. Like one of my favorite things is looking at ethical companies for long-term investing. Waste management, one of the most ethical companies of all time. I love that. Like they have good morals behind their objectives. That makes me happy. But what's important to you? Happiness is very subjective. Yeah. But money won't fucking bring it to it. Yeah. <laughs> it all depends. It all depends on what kind of life you want to get. What you have to take into consideration is that the winners in MIC have something to do besides trading. Definitely. Everyone. Javier. We talked like um, two or three months ago, he became an uh, MIC member. He tells me, what do I do? I, I tell everyone the same thing. You find out. Thank you for wearing your grown up for a dance. Fun of us had to. I'm glad you're plenty warm from New Jersey and yeah. we can find somebody to help you get the price tag off your shoe there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Steven, for coming all the way. It's so nice to meet you. And oh, this one, roast. he's so much fun. The first time I had a conversation with him on the phone, he calls me, I answer, he hangs up. Uh, I call him back. What? I call him oh, back. I remember this. I call him back and he says, I says, I think you're trying to call me. He goes, oh, you're a girl. <laughs> I go, yeah, last time I checked the looks. So I'm still stuck. I know so, you. What, oh my gosh, what a fun talk. Yeah. Yep. What's your username on? A dead co-host. Dip, we had a 30 minute talk, didn't we? We did. We had you a were time. so much fun. We I, had a good time. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I, it was so, recent. It was like two months ago. It was. Oh my God. I am having so much fun. I kind of stay low because I haven't been real busy yet. I got uh, a little bit of a disaster from a prior program I'm trying to work my way out of. Mm. Okay. <laughs> a little bit too much uh, credit spread creep on the uh, rollovers. But oh. anyway, we're getting through that. And I'm looking forward to, I, I'm paper trading this after I get through trading my real shit in the morning. The one thing I haven't heard people talking about here, which I have for the stock trading business is you got to have it in your gut, the love of the market and the love Passion. of the learning and the challenges yeah, that it gets sure. you. And there's so many different ways that you can attack this. You can do options and little options. You can do short, you can do long, you can do small cap, you can do large cap, all of this. And it's all a huge mountain of learning. And I don't know about all of you, but I love that learning. Yep, yep, and if yeah. you so don't have that fire in your yep. belly, if you're just doing it to make money, yep. uh, go find the bus and go look for a girl. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I have to say. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That was great. That's, that's actually my uh, stepmom and the, no, re the no, reason no, that I'm great. here today. But I've been really oh, wanting really? to answer your question. Um, so. I was working in restaurants when I was like 17, 18. So that, that time that I would have gone to college, I was making like, in my mind, like adult money. You know, I was making like 40 grand a year. And I, I felt good about that because I saw my friends who were going to college and they were broke. You know, so I was able to buy the things I want. And a few years later, you know, my friends start graduating college at like 24, 25. And all of a sudden, they're just getting plugged in to like double my salary, like instantly. Uh, so for me, it was like, then there were some years of frustration of like, damn, I made the wrong, you know, I made the wrong move, whatever. Um, and for me, uh, you know, about four or five years ago, I got out of the restaurant business, um, got into a sales job, started a company. So I had, I worked my way to a point now where I make college education money without a degree. So if you want, 
if you want money and you're wired that way, you're going to make it regardless. Like they already said everything about being able to access everything on YouTube. Uh, funny enough, what what I do now or a lot of my business is helping people not pay their student loan debt. <laughs> so it's it's kind of ironic how that how that all worked That's crazy. out. Um, Affiliate. But what I what I will say because I wish somebody had like ingrained this in me. Um, the, cause now I'm, I'm 33. There's, you know, there, there's those very important years of your life. That is a, forget the making money, forget the like, Oh, am I like, if we're talking Stanford or Harvard, you're not paying for the books. You're paying for the people you're around for right. everything. When it comes, when you level up with money, you're paying for your surroundings. You're paying for the people that you're sitting next to. You want to sit in first class, you're paying for who's next to you, not a better cushion on the seat, even though it is better. But as far as college, you can never, you can never go back and buy that experience. The you getting fucked up and passing out like the fun stuff, the uh, forget all the educational stuff, that experience during those years of your life, when you make money later, if you're in my position, I wish I could buy that experience. Like I'm jealous of people that have like, me too. like I had he, a lot of those. Yeah. When he touched on it and he's like, Hey, I'm pro that like, you will never talk yep. to because I've had these discussions with my stepmom because she, you know, when I would make up those few like, oh, it's too late for me to go. Like, it's never too late, but it is too late to have that those early 20s year. Like, it's a different thing. She went back strictly for the money, the degree, the hard work aspect. Like, you can always do that, but you can't go back and get those fun years. So my suggestion would be and exactly the, the education system is designed to create employees. 100%. So do not put, I'll, I'll put it this way. My brother was in the military and then he went straight from the military to, to school. I thought that he was doing really well all these years. I'd see him on vacations. And I'm like, I'm, a, I'm stuck in a kitchen. You know what I mean? For the most part, living paycheck to paycheck, even though I had a nice jacket that, you know, that was what it was. I, when I got into the debt resolution business, my brother was like, oh, I, I need your help. And I pulled up his information and I found out my brother was a quarter million dollars in debt, in student loan debt. So if we talk present day, I don't have a college education and I've got a quarter million dollar bankroll. He's got a quarter million dollars in debt. Yeah. So you can, it's up to you where you're going to take it. But that, that experience, you can't. You can't go back when you're 40 and have, like you'll be a creeper. If, I mean, you can, but you're not gonna like. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that move. Um, he, he said right there, dude. You have the rest of your life to grow the fuck up. Why? I want to be a kid. We can never go back to being a kid. You have an opportunity that money can't buy. Be a kid, dude, for 10 more years. The moment you become an adult, it sucks. Being an adult sucks. Why the hell you want to be trained right now? You go and fucking get drunk and pass out. I, I can't get drunk. I look silly getting drunk now. But no, that that was it. So what I would Enjoy say your childhood. is, and don't, and I'm not saying like, oh, just go blow, have fun, like, it, like balance is. You seem like you're very balanced and sharp for for your age. And like when you said the restaurant thing, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I just want to talk to this kid. What I would suggest is go. To Go to community college, do everything you can, get every, there's a lot of free money out there when it comes to education. It's like, oh, let me fill out this three page essay, boom, $5,000 grant. Yeah, so true. do your education to get as much free money as possible. Go to community college so that you're surrounded. You have the beautiful girls everywhere. The <laughs> girls are just as hot at community college as they are. <laughs> That's they're 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 I did both, <laughs> community college and yeah. college. You're, they're, they're, probably, they're probably better there, to be honest. Yeah. And the cool thing about that is then you're, you're on the same level with, you know what I mean? You didn't put yourself, say you come from nothing and then you put yourself in debt to go to an Ivy League school. Well, you're surrounded by a bunch of rich people who have yachts and, ha and you don't have the ability to do all of that. Um, exactly. Not saying there isn't value from, you know, from doing that, but I would say go to community college, take as little student loan debt as possible. If you do get debt, then give me a call. Uh, <laughs> and, and enjoy it and balance it. But like they said, the, the job is what funds the trading. Like for example, like I, my trading, if, you know, for a year, uh, it was between crypto and stocks or whatever. I crushed it for a year. I didn't have bad, I wasn't using leverage or anything. I was just, if there was a 5% dip, I bought in, I wasn't greedy. I made a couple hundred bucks and I got out. And I just did that for a year until they dumped the market. 
and I'm speaking for crypto mainly on that. Oh, for sure. But they just dumped the market. So all, all I could do there was just dollar cost average and hold. So for me, what I'm looking at, why, my, why I'm here, I was talking to my stepmom about, you know, she's doing some options and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, I see where I'm at now. And I see like just how manipulated the market is, all of it. And I'm like, okay, rather than be like, oh, it's too manipulated, I can't. I'm like, how do I change my strategy? So it's like shorting the market, um, which that kind of seems like, you know, the safest place to be right now. So that's that's kind of where I'm I'm intrigued to uh, learn from, you know, learn from you guys and why she wanted to get me out here. So I, I appreciate all the tidbits of info, but that was just something that was like really personal to me that I wish somebody had told me. Dude, I'm so, stoked that, that you guys stepped up. That was really cool. Awesome. Hey guys, this is what we're talking about. We're a family or we like, you know what I mean? All right, man. Hey, let's get up. Thank you.